Hey everyone, Yost here back with another video on screencasting. Today what I want to show you is how to record the screen off of your iOS device, your iPhone or your iPad, and how to pop that onto your desktop and how to save that so that you can later on edit it in another video. So you might want to create a product tutorial video, you might want to create a, or an app review video series for example. And what I'm going to use for that here is a Mac app called Reflector. It's actually also available for Windows, but I'm uh, more familiar with the Mac version. Apparently there are some limitations on the Windows version. And what Reflector does is it uses AirPlay. So you're going to have to make sure that your device is supported and you're going to need the uh, one of the more recent versions of iOS. So when you first launch Reflector, let's do that now, you're not going to see much. Um, the first thing you want to do here is go to the settings, so command comma, and what I'm going to pick here is the optimize for uh, for the iPhone 5. Now I'm actually going to record it later on as a 1080p video. I'm going to get the highest resolution possible for YouTube on that. And what this is going to do is it's going to record it at 640 by 1136. You might want to pick a different option depending on what phone you have. And uh, now what you need to do is on your phone, double tap on the home button. Now the phone has to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer that you're recording it from for it to turn up. And you swipe to the right twice. And then you hit the little AirPlay button here, which is the box with a triangle pointing into it. And now you will see uh, any AirPlay device capable of receiving the stream. Now, in my case, it's called Serendipity, the name of my machine here, my computer. Tap on that, enable mirroring, and hit Done. And the moment you do that, you'll see that is my actual iPhone home screen right now on the screen here on my MacBook. And anything you do on the phone immediately gets mirrored over here. We can launch an app, for example. And we can go back to the home screen. Now, if I hit Command R, what will happen is uh, Reflector will also start recording the video. So anything you're doing is actually going to get recorded into a video file later on. And now let's just do that again. Swipe around a little bit more. Go back to Tweetbot. Scroll around. And now I'm going to hit Control R again because I'm done. Now, when you record the file, um, you have the option of including the device frame. The device frame is this little iPhone 5 frame, in this case, around it. I'm actually not going to do that. I don't want to have the uh, default iPhone 5 frame be, being used. I want just the raw video on the inside. And I'll show you later in ScreenFlow why that is. So uh, we'll just hit save, I'll place the previous one. And uh, it'll take a minute to save the file. And when it's done, I'll see you guys back in ScreenFlow. So now we're in ScreenFlow. And rather than starting a recording like you would normally do, we're going to go to the file menu here and, and create a new empty document. From here, it'll ask you what resolution you want. And uh, you want to create a 1080p video in the end, so we're going to use 1920 by 1080. And don't worry if your desktop doesn't actually support that resolution, because we're going to be editing that video fully within ScreenFlow. We're not actually going to be recording anymore the desktop. So just hit Create. And you'll see you've got a big black empty canvas here. And I'm using ScreenFlow 4, by the way. So I'm going to go to the Media Manager here and add a couple of files. Now, I've got my reflector recording from earlier, and I've also got an uh, iPhone 5 frame that I've created, especially for 1080p resolution. And that actually is a, uh, an image that will, where we will embed the video that we recorded in. And I've also got a desktop background that I want to use as well in 1080p. And uh, we're going to add those to our media tab over here. So we're going to start out with the background tab. And I'm going to link to some of these files in the uh, description below. Drag that, into the, drag that into the timeline here. And I'm just going to resize it a little bit here. We can fine tune the, uh, the actual sizes later on. Next up is our iPhone 5 image. I'm going to drag that above the desktop background because it has to lie on top of it. And I'm going to resize it as well. Now, finally, the actual recording of the video that we took earlier. Now, if you hit Shift while you're dragging in a video, you can, oops. You can create a, um, a new row here in that timeline. So I'm going to do that. And now we know how long the video is. If you hit the minus and the, uh, the equals keys here, you can kind of resize your timeline a little bit. And uh, from here, if you hit Shift and select these two, for example, you can resize them both to fit the length of the video that you recorded. All right, so if you take a look at the canvas over here, you'll see that the video is too big. It overlaps our iPhone frame. It barely fits into that window. So what we're going to do here is, while hitting Shift again, Shift will let you um, basically select the video below as well. 
hit shift and then drag these little corners here. Now shift preserves the aspect ratio, which is what we want. Make it a little bit smaller here like that first. And now when we drag it around, because the uh, by default the, the image that we added was centered, and it will snap to the appropriate centered position. Now uh, snapping should be turned on. Double check here under the view menu if snapping is turned on. And this already looks pretty good. What you can do is if you hit command equal, you can zoom in a little bit, and now you can kind of scroll around and make sure that none of that red is visible. And it actually looks looks like we've got it. If you need to do some fine tuning and adjusting. If you can select a video down here again, and then click on this again up here, now you can use the arrow keys to move pixel by pixel and kind of move your video around just a tiny bit more if you need to like you know cover up one of the red spot stripes, for example. But this already looks pretty good. And let's just drag our scrubber down a little bit into the middle of the video and play it back and see how it looks. Yep, there we go. That doesn't look too bad, does it? But we're not done yet. I want to show you one more nice little effect that you can add. And uh, this is why I didn't choose the frame recording from Reflector to be incorporated into the video. So, ScreenFlow has the idea of a video action. And a video action is basically like a keyframe, I think. Now, what we'll want to do here, for example, is halfway through the video, we want to move this iPhone to the side because we might want to use the rest of the video to add some text. So, what we do here is you select these two uh, sections of the timeline. And from the Video Properties tab up here, you want to go Add Video Action. And now you'll see these two little boxes here appear. And with a scrubber after the boxes, just take these uh, two video images here and drag them all the way to the side. Now you can use the snapping feature again to kind of move it all the way to the side there with a little bit of a gap there. So now if we move our scrubber forward and play back a little bit, you'll notice that the iPhone smoothly moves to the side. Now you can kind of adjust this a little bit and you can, you can drag this um, a little bit more. I like to keep it maybe 0.7 seconds. And uh, we play this back again. So now we've got this big empty space here, and it's going to be perfect for some text that we're going to add to our video. Now, from the text tab over here, simply add, click on Add a Text Box. And you'll see that another row was added here up top, and it'll default to the position of the scrubber that you were at. So we can play around with some of the options here. I like to keep the, um, get rid of the backdrop, make it black text. And we'll just pick some interesting text to display. Now you may need to play around with the box size here to get it to wrap properly like this. And you can drag this around again. It'll tell you when it's centered. It'll help you with some, uh, some alignments here. Let's just suppose we want to keep it here. Uh, one nice thing to do with text like this is to add a transition. So again, this is a ScreenFlow 4 feature, I think. We're going to do add start and ending transition at the same time. And the transition time here, I'll probably go for 0.7 seconds again. Um, I like the cross dissolve feature. As a matter of fact, I've set that to my default now. And we're going to do the same thing over here. 0.7. So if you move back a little bit, you'll see first the phone moves to the side and slowly some text fades in. Maybe actually move this over just a little bit, give it some extra time to turn up. Have a look at that one more time. And we can also control how long that text appears. So depending on the amount of text you're displaying, you might want to shorten that a little bit. All right, one last time. All right, that's not too bad. And obviously you can you can play around with this area completely. You can add images, you can add giant blocks of text, bullet items, and you can do a lot more than I've done here in this small example. But I think that gives you a nice idea of how to use the screen because when you're using a, um, most apps are gonna be here in portrait mode, you have a lot of empty screen real estate. It really helps to move the phone to the side sometimes and maybe do some stuff with this big blank empty canvas here. And the reason I didn't use the iPhone's, um, the iPhone frame from Reflector, by the way, is that 
when you record it in Reflector, it can't have these edges be transparent because it's a video and it can't do transparent videos. So it would have to have these edges be sort of your desktop background and then it records it at a giant resolution. I, I didn't want to do any of that, so I used my own custom image. And again, that's linked down there below in the description. So if you want this exact same image, you can check that out too. Now, one last tip. When you're exporting your video, make sure that you pick the dimensions of 100%, 1920 by 1080, because by default, this will actually be 50%, and you want the full 1080p resolution that we've created here in your final video. You just hit export, and a couple of minutes, depending on how fast your machine is, it will be done, and you'll be ready to upload this to YouTube. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a comment below and have a look at some of the related videos linked here elsewhere on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bye.